What's up Amazon sellers? The restock limits have really changed the Amazon game and lots of Amazon sellers are even shutting down their Amazon business. But for me, I've changed my business strategy and in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick update of my Amazon business and the results of my new business strategy. So stay tuned. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I've been selling on Amazon now for four years. Now I talked about it recently, I just changed my strategy and what does it mean? We have broken the one million pound mark over the last 12 months and actually we've just broken it year to date as well. Now what I do is I share everything about my business, what I'm doing, my model, the way we work in videos like this and it's to help you guys out as well because my God, there's so much opportunity on Amazon. But what I will say is if you like this kind of content, give me a big thumbs up and hey, if you wanna see more videos like this hit the subscribe button down below but enough about me let's jump into what we're going to talk about today so first things first number one i'm going to give you a quick recap of the strategy number two i'm going to talk about the old strategy versus the new strategy number three i'm going to talk about what are the results of my new strategy and then number four i'm going to share some top tips on how to improve your restock limits as well if that's something you're really challenged with right now. Oh my God, get it right, Tom. Okay, so first things first, number one, quick recap of the situation so far. Now, to give you an update of, should we say, or a recap of what happened in my Amazon business when the restock limits came in. So normally my team and I would hold, should we say, about 12,000 units of stock and we'd probably ship them out or, or sell them over pretty much like a three, four month period. Now, when the restock limit happened, we were limited to only 6,000 units of stock by Amazon's own restock, by the limitation. So it was like, oh my God, we've got 6,000 units, too much. Also, this resulted in us having a lot of stock in the warehouse that we couldn't ship in, which was about 20,000 pounds worth of stock. And then also as well, we had another about 20,000 pounds worth of stock on its way to the warehouse as well, that you know, it's just gonna add up. So it was like, oh my God. So what did we do? We just stopped purchasing immediately and we had to think about selling the stock out in our Amazon warehouses. Why? Because Amazon's telling you, you've just got too much stock. They're not a warehouse, they're a fulfillment center sell it through. So what we did is we had to sell our stock pretty much break even prices just to get it cleared so that we could allow our warehouse to start shipping into Amazon. Now, what did this do? It increased our restock capacity, which was great. You know, long story short, there were days when our sales were insanely high. And I think we did like 75,000 in one week, but the profit from it was like nothing. Now, if you want to know more about, should say, the restock limits, what I'll do is I'll post a video up here about that. And if you want to know the background of my new strategy, Strategy, that is the video, so check that out. That leads me quite nicely onto chapter two, my old strategy versus my new strategy. Now, before my old strategy was, should we say, looking for deals, classic vanilla arbitrage, 30% ROI, three pound profit. And we pretty much repriced our stocks to, you know, reduce down, maybe reduce that profitability after about three months. You know, we, we again, I come back, we sold it in about four to five months. Now that's from Amazon fulfillment centers. Now, what we've done now and the change in strategy, we started accepting 20% ROI products and two pound profit with the consideration of the velocity of sales of that deal simply as long as it's a faster selling deal we're happy to purchase it. Now to summarize the goal of the new business model the new strategy 20% ROI two pound profit and we aim to sell those products faster than we used to. Why we need to sh shift the stock quicker and not hold it in Amazon's warehouses because we were penalized previously. Basically, it's a game of time, you know, speed of turnover of the stock. And by doing this, we're able to maintain the stock within Amazon, but also though Amazon's rewarding us by increasing our restock limits. So now we used to, you know, again, I said we had 6,000 limit. Now we have like 22,000, very, very big difference. And also as well, because we're turning stock over more, we're doing more revenue, but the profits are probably a little bit higher, but not hugely. Now you might be asking, am I earning less from the new strategy or am I earning more? Well, to give you an answer, I will share with you a comparison of my old versus new strategy. So let me kind of jump on the screen and explain it to you. Okay, so what I've done here, I've basically just done two sets of calculations. On the left-hand side, we've got the old strategy. So let's say for example, you know, I've done a 10,000 pound or $10,000 investment. And what I've done is I've done a 30% ROI. So you can see we're gonna make 3,000 pounds or $3,000 profit. And then we're gonna total out at 13,000. Now, what I've said is the months, so like in an ideal world, if we're kind of churning that money so month zero that's starting and then month three we reinvest month six month nine month twelve 
So you can see, starting with 10,000, making a 30% ROI, we're gonna make 13,000 profit. We start with that again, we reinvest it back in a 30% ROI, we're gonna make 16,900. And we keep doing that over the course of one year. What do we get? Well, we're gonna end with 37,129. Now, the new strategy coming back down to 20% ROI, but again, remember we're looking at faster selling items, selling the volume quicker. Let's go through, so month zero, 10,000 again starting, only a 20% ROI, so not as much profit, remember, 12,000. But if we can do it quicker, I mean, we're not waiting three months, we're only waiting two. Well, I now have 12,000, I reinvest it, I make 2,400, I now have 14,400. But because I'm doing it in two months, not three months, I can now turn it more times. So like here, I can turn this, let's just have a quick look here, count is seven, and if I'm doing it this way here, this is count is going to be five. So at the faster speed, I'm turning it seven times in one year rather than five times a better ROI. What's the net result? Well, you can see quite simply the total profit on 30% ROI, turning it every 90 days or three months. That includes buy, ship, and waiting the 14 days for Amazon to sell it. That is going to lead me to have a total you know, value of all my assets at the end of the year, including my initial 10,000 investment of 37,129. If I would turn it quicker, a lower ROI, and now I'm gonna have 35,832. Super interesting, only 2,000 pound less, pretty much near, very similar, but what am I doing? Well, interesting enough, it's just be able to turn it more often and actually gonna make pretty much the same amount of money. So. Super interesting there, and that is the fundamental behind the old versus new strategy. Quick question for you guys, the restock limits have changed the game. You know, in the UK, we've definitely seen average ROIs coming down from like 30, probably down to about 20%. Very, very interesting. But I wanna understand how you guys have reacted to the restock limits. Let me know in the comments down below, what have you done? Have you accepted a lower margin, looking to sell quicker? Or are you just seeing lower margins across the board? Or have you completely changed your business? Let me know down below, I'm very interested to understand also as well quick thing for you guys if you are looking at growing your business and hey you know maybe you're looking at changing it to the model that i'm doing whereby you're taking a slightly lower roi but turning it more what's the one thing you need you need deals or leads you need leads to buy to flip to resell on amazon now if you're like me and you understand that finding these just takes time and you just want to up the number of leads you've got look no further than fast track fpa leads so the service I created, we've got a team of sources in the USA and also in the UK sourcing seven days a week. What we do is we put every single deal, not some, but every single deal we find onto our web platform where you can come in, pick and choose the deals that you want, buy them from the supplier, resell them on Amazon, make the money. Check it out, Fast Track FBA Leads. I think you'll love it. Have a look at the link down below. Right, this leads me nicely onto chapter number three. What are the results of my new strategy? This is what you really wanna know. What I wanna do is I wanna put a screenshot up here of my Amazon seller app, and you are gonna just see that revenue growth. Now, interesting enough, the one thing you see before, and you know, I talked about it in my million pound journey. Prior, we were probably doing like 30,000. We moved up to like 45,000, maybe 70,000. 5,000 restock limits came in, we hit 100, 120, and now we're at 200, 220,000. Now, what I will say is definitely our margin has been decreased, but it's not been decreased by the factor that we scaled by. Now, you look at that revenue growth, and you can say even at a lower margin, profits on it are definitely good. So, long story short, we are seeing an increase in turnover of the products, but our revenues have gone through the roof and they're still making good profits. And if you want to know, little, little between you and me, we're definitely making good profits off that given the amount of volume that we're doing as well. So super happy, the model's working. Will it stay forever? I really don't know, but definitely working and we're seeing that in the growth of the business as well. Now, the one question you might be asking, is it effective? Yes, it is effective. Quite simply, by changing the model, by focusing on sales performance rather than ROI has helped me to bring back my business again. Why? Because we are making less profit per item, but we can shift more volume. And also, though, we can survive with Amazon's new restock limits. And we have space to ship products in, get them sold, and we are still obviously making money. Does this mean you can't earn money on the old model? No, not at all, but we have to adapt or die. And unfortunately, my old model just wasn't working. So we adapted, 
Is it different? Yes. Are we as profitable as we were before per unit of sale? No, not at all. But we're still making money. So that's it. We're in business. I'm happy. And that leads me on nicely to number four, some top tips for you how to improve your restock limits. So a couple of things I'd really recommend for you. If you are creating shipments in your back of house Amazon Seller Central, make sure that you only create shipments that are going to be shipped in. Any kind of like part created or even like rogue shipments or just testing ones, they take out of your restock limits. So get them deleted because the moment you add products into them, they remove the inventory from your restock limit. Get them deleted. Now, number two is delete any unfulfillable products. These are like broken products in your Amazon fulfillment centers, anything you have on your Amazon Seller Central, get them deleted, get them returned, get them destroyed, doesn't matter because they are counted in your restock limit. Now, number three, fix your stranded inventory. If you've got inventory that doesn't have a listing, get it fixed, get it sold because they are holding up your restock limit, but they're not able to be on sale. So they just sat there doing nothing. Number four, get rid of products that are slow selling. Now, Amazon restock limits are basically based on how quick you're selling your products and they do something called days in inventory. That's a really important thing. The faster your products are selling, the more space Amazon give you. The slower your products are selling, the less space Amazon gives you up to a certain point. And then obviously you're gonna have too much stock. That leads me nicely onto number five, get rid of inventory, which is over 90 days. Now for us in the UK, it's about 60 to 90 days. In the US, they're seeing about 90 days. If you're holding stock, if you're the average age of inventory is over 90 days, you're just gonna be hitting your restock limits. So looking at those products in your inventory, which are 90 days or more, get them, reduce the price, clear them down. It's just gonna make sure that none of your stock is over that and you're gonna have space in your inventory. Now, the sixth one, which I'd recommend is manage your excess inventory. Now, what does this mean? Is if you've got certain lines of products that you've got too much stock, get them sold through, reduce the price, because they're just gonna be sat there not helping you. You can even get them removed back to your warehouse, maybe if you want to do that. The restock limit is challenging. It's about us adapting our businesses and being resilient and looking for new ways to manage our business. Now, what I will say is if you do feel like giving up, and my God, with the restock limits, I certainly did at that time when it first came in, I'm gonna leave a video up here that I created, which is gonna help you just be more motivated in your business to keep going forward, because this is an amazing opportunity, an amazing new environment that we live in. So check that out. It's gonna help drive your business and really support you. So I'll drop that video around here. But hey, hopefully you've liked this video. If you have, give me a big like. And hey, if you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button down below. But for me, Thomas Parkinson and Fast FBA, thank you very much.